Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Gershon Viconi. I made a Tego Harpa or Yuiko. I actually made more like a Yuiko because it has three strings. Now, if you're only interested in finding out what it sounded like, this is a long video. Even if you watch it at double speed, it will take you 13 minutes. At normal speed, it will take probably 25, 26 minutes. So if you're only interested in the final result, I'm going to put a link in the description to that specific timestamp so you can just go straight there. Hey, I'm Gershom Dukoni. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Around the same time that I got the idea to make the flute, which I already have a video of, I also got the idea to make a tegelharpa. It's an ancient Nordic bowed lyre that I heard in some great music from a guy called Danheim, who does a lot of Viking style music. It's actually there behind me. I successfully made it, and this video is an explanation of how I made it in detail with lots of time-lapse videos of me working my butt off to get this thing done. Enjoy! It all started off with a basic plan which I ended up not really using. I did use the dimensions from it but not much else honestly and that was a mistake. What I did use was the basic measurements. So if you look at the left hand side there, the uh, kind of width that I chose for the instrument was a roughly 164 165 millimeters and then when I went along the length of the instrument I did end up choosing to use roughly the size as it's a base a Yuhiko a model which is about one meter and five centimeters roughly and uh, for the top part I didn't quite follow the diagram exactly I ended up doing a rough uh, 200 millimeters there's actually a tiny angle to this tagal harpa so there's like a two degree angle for the wood that makes it go up into that shape a little bit better but like i said i only followed these basic measurements and much to my dismay at some points and also relief at other points i didn't follow much of the plan besides this i did follow the depth uh, the same as in the picture which is a depth of roughly 53 millimeters the first thing that I actually did was make the frame, which isn't pictured here. For the frame, I ended up using pine, which is something I regret and wouldn't do again. So I would not recommend using pine. It's too soft of a wood. Luckily for me, this plank here is made of merba wood, and that's the front one, so it's very strong. So because I had a strong, thick plank at the front, I just cut out the shape that I wanted. Ah, uh, here at this point, I thought I was making so much progress. Then I glued the frame that I'd built to the plank that I'd cut and let it sit overnight. The next day, I took all the clamps off and checked if I'd missed anything. It was at this point that I realized I didn't have a cross bar in the middle. I just made the outside of the frame, so I went ahead and made a bar to fit in the middle of the tagal harpa so that I could cut out the front plank correctly and have an actually resonant chamber inside. Some people aren't big fans of using screws in their instrument building. As it was my first time building, I went ahead and used screws. In the future, I might try not using screws. The main like motivation for a lot of instrument makers to not use screws is they say it affects the weight of the instrument and it can also affect the tone. I'm not sure. I haven't made enough instruments to know for sure. Maybe in the future I'll find out. A lot of people just think it looks ugly, so that's why they don't do it. At this point, I thought to myself that perhaps I would try and hide the screws a little bit by making a small little groove, uh, a little like extra big hole at the top uh, to try and hide the screw better. I ended up kind of ditching this plan later, but at the time it seemed like a good idea. Uh, currently I have that the screws are just exposed and I'm actually quite happy with that. Uh, at this point in time I was thinking of hiding the screws using some wood filler. Um, but later I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be proud of the fact that I use screws on this. It's my first instrument build. Uh, it does make things a lot easier when you use screws. Then my sanding journey started. I did not realize how much I would be sanding forever and ever when I do this kind of thing. Especially for me, as I was using quite rough cut wood, I spent hours sanding. Then I took a drill and I made holes so that I could use my jigsaw to access that section of the board that I was going to cut out. 
Here I'm using a chalk line to make sure my lines are straight. It did help a bit, but I wouldn't say my lines were that much straighter. After this, it was sanding. Here it is, sanding, sanding, sanding. There's so many videos of me sanding. If you wanna go watch all of them, you can go to my TikTok. I put most of them on there of me sanding, uh, but I'm not gonna make you sit through all the videos of me sanding. Instead, I'll put just a few quick ideas of how much time it took me to sand everything down. Here you can see me measuring. I started to want to do something else besides sanding, and I thought I would start with some of the designs. So I started making measurements. At this point, I did not realize how deeply I would end up messing things up very, very soon. I was still in this blissful ignorance of someone who's just started making instruments. And there I am, drawing on little bird designs uh, with pencil first so that I could cut them out later. It was at this point I started making lots of little mistakes, which led to big mistakes. Here you can see me drilling a bunch of holes to try and get the rough shape of the birds. Not the correct approach. You also can see that the top plank that I have there is actually way too thick to be a resonant soundboard, which I didn't realize at this point. I really thought the thicker the plank, the better. Well, I learned the hard way very soon that that's not the case. There you can see I made a bunch of holes to make the rough bird shape and then I set up the camera and started to carefully jigsaw out those holes into the bird shape. I was feeling really good about myself at this point. I was like, wow, I've found such a inventive way to, to kind of you know, work this all together. Uh, but the cuts were actually super rough and there probably was a much better way to do this or maybe I should have just waited till I was much further along with the instrument. Um, however, I didn't know that. I was happily working on this. So, got the basic shape of the two crows. So need a little detail on the feet. I'm gonna smooth all that out and then move to the next step. Now I'm making the main sound hole and the taco hole body just to have it in place. I think it's safer. What a fool I was. I really had no idea what I was doing. I think making the sound hole at this time was fine, but just if you look at the, the woodwork on those crows, it's just pretty bad. On top of that, at this point, I finally realized that the top plank was way too thick. After trying to borrow a planer, a hand planer from a friend, I eventually got access to this uh, electric planer uh, and I was able to start planing, but planing a piece of wood that thick took so long and you can see me moving around the camera to different places. <laughs> it just took forever to plane this piece of wood down it was basically two centimeters thick and I had to plane it down 1.4 centimeters to 0 0.6 roughly. It was terrible. It's a terrible plan. Don't, don't, don't do what I did, please. Man, planing something down from two centimeters to like a half or 0 0.6, too much. I'm not going to do this next time. I'm going to be smarter and buy right thickness of plank yeah no duh well you live and you learn right apparently not because then I made a huge mistake so I messed it up pretty bad I was trying to plane the tago harpa and I'm kind of new to this stuff so I overdid it and now I made a massive hole that I have to repair. Somehow, I have no idea what I'm going to do. <sighs> I took off too much on that side. This part, this part, we can hide and sand down. So then, as I was going over this part, I splintered it. Like I, I went against the grain, which you're not supposed to do. And now there's a massive hole where the bird was. So. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Luckily for me, I had a extra piece of wood from the plank I'd gotten, because I got the plank way too large, which I could then plane down and stick over my massive mistake. Again, the planing 
took a very long time. All right, so I shaved this down to thinner. I'm gonna try and cut out the part I messed up and place down the replacement piece as exactly as I can. So there's the where the birds used to be. I cut a hole and then stick this piece over on top. Hopefully I can sand it away and hide it. I ended up kind of making a wood filler to hide the edge a little bit better. I had so much sawdust and chips left from my large amount of planing that I did that I decided to glue that down on the edge and then I would sand down the edge. Again, lots and lots of sanding. Not going to make you watch the whole thing. Filing, sanding, filing, sanding, filing, sanding. And so here I roughly reached my midpoint. The front board was uh, planed, sanded, and looking decent. The next step was to cut the neck so that I could actually reach the strings and hold it at the same time. And then obviously, again, sand it down. Then it was time for the backboard. I actually had a piece of ply left and not enough of the same hardwood that I had at the front. But this ply looked all right. I liked the grain of it. So I thought, it's my first instrument. I'm not going to buy more wood. I'm going to just try and use the ply that I already have and use that as a backboard. I then read that most violins sound post is what helps them to have that good tone transference from the top to the bottom. So I decided to make my own sound post because I had forgotten to order sound posts online. Um, and this is me making that sound post. It took quite a lot longer than I thought it would, but hey, I learned how to make a sound post. And again, sanding this time a very nasty old piece of ply. And then I started gluing on that backboard. You can see my glue work is not that good. Again, things that I regret doing, not better. You learn a lot when you do this for the first time. But this was the first point where I felt like I was getting close to finishing this thing. Mind you, it had been weeks of me sanding and planing. So in good news, it seems to be working. The approach I was trying of trying to put like sawdust to hide that edge. Just keep having to add more and then have to sand it down. I'm going to show you guys. So this is many, many layers of me adding saw dust and then sanding it down. And it is slowly, you can kind of see, it's kind of slowly blending in the edge. I think once I lacquer all of it, it's all the same color. And then if I do some detail work on here, it will actually hide it pretty nicely. So you know what? Mistake corrected. And then I had to sand that down for ages. At this point, I could sand more and then finally start getting the edges down so that it looked a little bit more rounded as an instrument rather than super boxy. A uh, lot of filing, a lot of sanding. Again, ages. And my next newbie mistake was about to happen. I measured where I was putting the tuners, forgetting to measure the size of the tuners, and then drilling a wrong hole, resulting in extra holes on the Yuhiko. And then my next newbie mistake I'd made at the very beginning. My positioning for the tuners meant that I couldn't actually put the tuners on unless I got rid of a part of my frame at the very top, which I then had to saw off very difficultly. It was an annoying saw and just a bad decision. Again, making this in the future, I'll actually plan these kind of things out better. I advise you to plan better than I did when you start building this. Like I said, it's my first time, so it was a steep learning curve for me. What you're witnessing here is me desperately trying to figure out how to do this and failing at it and needing to try all these different methods to get that piece out. <laughs> it was terrible. I think it was really the moment that I realized that, you know, eyeballing things and trying to wing it a little bit doesn't work when you're making instruments it's not the same as you know, building a box or a simple thing that you've already built in the past it's a whole craft and I had not planned out the attempt at doing this craft well enough so that's definitely something I'll take forward in the future is that planning it step by step is really important and it saves you a ton of time if you just plan it properly in the first place 
which I did not do because as I mentioned before, I had that plan and then kind of abandoned that plan mostly. I'm actually kind of shocked that the Tega Harpa turned out okay because my planning was such a mess for this. I mean, you see me making drawings there. This is 100% me kind of rolling with the punches and trying my best to make it work. Uh, here you can see I'm standing off the screen just like trying to figure it out and then finally I pick up this jigsaw to make a curved thing to make more space for the tuners and once again I hadn't actually planned this step out properly because um, I didn't actually put the tuners in the correct position and didn't have enough space to put the tuners in correctly which I realized at that point just then. And at this point, I finally got so sick of all the mistakes I was making, I decided to go to something a little more familiar, drawing and etching on those birds. Now on my new piece, which I was still fixing by adding more glue and wood bits just to get it exactly right and, and to look natural. Um, again, mistakes I could have avoided. Once again, I wanted to draw more. So I spent ages drawing in designs that I looked up online. And an interesting thought kind of crossed my mind as I'm watching myself do this is I'm building an instrument for the first time. I don't even know at this point if it will sound good or absolutely terrible. And yet I'm choosing to spend so much artistic design time on it. Tiny little update. I've started etching in with a pencil some designs that I want to draw. Some Futhark, which is ancient Norse Germanic text, which I read on there, wrote on there. And then I'm going to etch that in with a uh, Dremel and a, so it's like basically burn it in. I started off using a pointy uh, head, which went way too slow and the lines were way too thin. So then I ended up switching to a round ball head, which got me much better results much faster. It did create a lot of sawdust though, so eventually I moved away from the clean desk space and went back into the workshop, which was also much nicer. Okay, I just cut off the legs of this cello bridge and uh, let's hope that sticks on nicely. Of course, I forgot that the cello legs, when you cut them, have to also be straight because they're actually bent normally. And obviously my tickle harp is not a cello, so I had to spend a lot of time filing it down. I also didn't realize that you don't actually have to glue down a cello bridge at all. The strings can hold it in place and the glue can actually stop some of the tone. So if you're gonna do this, don't glue on your cello bridge. Then I continued etching and I found a much, much faster technique. I was using a circular bit which burned and moved way, way faster than the previous one especially for straight lines like Futhar. It was just so quick to use this fiberglass rotary cutting bit. It just worked so much faster and so nicely. I usually use it to like cut off screws. It's just a super versatile tool. Even on the birds, which is a much more circular design, I was able to actually use the same tool and get most of the details in on these crows as well. Now at this point, I actually still thought that I, those two middle triangles were gonna be my sound holes because I didn't think I could do the F holes properly, so I was gonna make them decorative. Um, but I changed my mind about that later on and ended up just making them part of the design pattern and actually being able to make the F holes properly, which was really cool. In case you're wondering, the two crows are Hugen and Munin. Uh, they're the two crows that Odin has with him. Uh, one means thought and one means memory. And the other symbols uh, in Futhark say, I resound and beautiful sound. So I was trying to write something on there with the hope that the instrument would actually sound good. Obviously, I had no way of actually knowing if it would sound good. And that's why the thought was often going through my head as I was etching this, if this would all be just purely for an ornamental instrument or if it would end up being you know worth it at 
this point, I use the same rotary tool, it's called a Dremel, to actually cut the F-holes. And I was so happy because it actually worked. And it was so cool to actually be able to make F-holes and know that I could make this in the future if I ever make other instruments as well, just with the tools that I have. So if you don't have a rotary tool or Dremel, really you should consider getting one because for the price, the versatility you get with it is fantastic. At this point, I was finally close to being done. And I'm sure if you've watched this long, even on double speed, you're probably like, yes, he's finally almost done. So I stained the whole thing a cherry red color because I had so many different types of wood I used. Again, my first time building an instrument, I wanted to save money. Um, and so I stained it all one color and it's made it look more uniform and in my opinion, a lot better. It's almost ready. Got a cello D string, a cello C string, and another cello C string. Those are the ones I'm gonna use on my Tegel Harpa. So now that the Tegel Harpa is a nice red color, which is what I wanted, I'm gonna apply the whole thing with linseed oil. Linseed oil is a bit like a natural version of polyutherin. I don't wanna use polyutherin because um, it's very toxic to breathe in. I don't have the right mask for that at the moment. And also, I don't want that thick, um, kind of hard plasticky layer, which polyutherin gives. I'd rather go for this uh, more naturally waxy uh, layer, which linseed oil gives. So I'm gonna go for that. This piece of scrap uh, wood, hard wood, which I got from up here cutting, is gonna be the tail piece over here. So it's gonna float uh, with a, a, a pin attached here, and then the strings are gonna go over the bridge and then work their way up to the tuning pit. And here is me applying the linseed oil, which I must say gave a very nice finish and it also smells really nice. So I'm probably gonna keep using linseed oil. It's just, it's pretty sweet. Okay, it was at this point that I realized how stupid I'd been to not measure my tuning peg area properly in the first place. Not only did I have to like angle one of the tuners off center to make it fit, but also the tuning pegs are in the wrong direction. They're where the strings are. And well, practically it didn't turn out that bad. It actually ended up fine, but still what a rookie mistake to make. So, you know, you live and you learn, but this is one mistake I hopefully won't make again. Wow. Actually turned out way better than I thought it would. The linseed oil really adds that final touch. All the detailing actually turned out way darker. And the tuning pegs up there look good. I hope they function the way I want them to and they won't get in the way when I play, but we'll have to see about that. Next, to string the Yuhiko with some string for the tailpiece. And yeah, it totally didn't work. Don't use this kind of string for the tailpiece. Filing down the sound post was a lot of fun, not really. But hey, I did manage to file it down and fit it in. Now, usually people use special tools for this. I was just using a bottlenose plier but miraculously it worked. I actually got it in there real fast and in the position I wanted it in very quickly. So hey, sometimes you don't need those special tools if you're lucky. Okay, I'm now gonna tune it up. Already put one string on. Um, then after that is the moment of truth to find out if it sounds terrible, inaudible, or good. So I was tuning this, I was super nervous. I actually ended up changing one string out later. That's when I realized the strings were not strong enough. Alas, I would have to go back to the workshop once again because the strings from the tailpiece were just flopping around because the tension wasn't correct. Put a new 
tailpiece on and now restringing. So I restrung that bad boy while talking to my wife and then I tested it. So I'm quite excited. The Tangle Harpa works, which to me is already amazing. And without further ado, here is the final sound of my Tegel Harpa. I must say, for a first ever build, I'm quite happy with it. The only effects that I used on this were reverb and a little bit of EQ on the low end and the high end, but barely affect the sound. It just made it less muddy. I've improvised a little something. I'm not that good at the instrument yet, so do bear that in mind. It is tuned with a C, a A1, and a A2. This is not the standard Yuhiko tuning. I just found it sounded best on these strings. <laughs> For those of you that want to stick around, I'll just be playing the strings open one by one in a second just to show the sound. <laughs> 